For more on the overall investigation into the botched Christmas Day bombing attempt and the president's meeting today, later this afternoon, in the Situation Room on that investigation, I'm joined now by my friend Rachel Maddow, host of The Rachel Maddow Show, of course, on MSNBC. Rachel, great to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to come in for us today. Happy to. Um, let's talk about the president's meeting in the Situation Room, because everybody's all dialed up, and now we have Janet Napolitano telling Pete Williams that maybe we have to re eliminate those privacy screens, quote unquote, from the, uh, the screening devices that are going to be put in at many airports coming into, the, into this country. Do we have to worry about that balance between privacy, uh, personal liberties, and making sure we, we guard our nation's security? I think we do. I think that that's the, the classic thing that we always think that we're balancing. And the thing that we sometimes lose track of when we're talking about that balance between privacy, civil rights, uh, civil liberties, and safety, the thing that we often lose track of, I think, is efficacy. It's one thing to be asked to give up some measure of, of liberty, some measure of privacy in order to make ourselves in the country more safe. But I think Americans at this point now, this long after 9-11, with all of the different things that have been tried and the continuing face, the continuing threat we face from al-Qaeda, Americans really want to know that what we are giving up our liberties for is going to work. And that re asking really hard-nosed questions about efficacy, I think, is sort of the next step in Americans coming to grip with the ongoing threat of terrorism. I mean, I was really struck, Rachel, by the fact that the State Department takes this list, the terror list, which for a lot of political reasons remains unchanged. So Cuba is on the list of terror-sponsoring states. And all of a sudden, Cuba gets put into this category. Now, first of all, there aren't flights. There are only uh, very, you know, limited flights into Miami from Cuba. These are these charts flights, and they're mostly families going back and forth with remittances. Right. But second of all, you cannot have a country, believe me, I know this from my travels there, you can't have a country with tougher security than Cuba. This is not a country that's going to be a willing host to al-Qaeda, and nor will al-Qaeda uh, pass, pass through Cuba unchallenged. So how do they get put on this list? It's just sort of a, another thumb in the eye, and it seems political more than looking at what is reasonable. Well, one of the ways that we formed that list was by importing the State Department's list of state sponsors of terror, which, of course, we know isn't a straightforward declaration. It's a very, very political declaration to end up on that list. And the, the, the diplomacy on those issues, you know, goes uh, right to the very top and extends over decades in some cases. So, again, it's a question of efficacy. I mean, you look at this list. Yeah, Cuba's on it. For all the weird reasons that you just described, that's a sort of strange declaration. It also should be noted that when Richard Reed, the shoe bomber, tried to pull off something very similar to what we faced on Christmas Day. He was a Jamaican citizen who had been living in England. He was of Jamaican and English origin. Neither Jamaica nor England is on this list. Uh, and, and when John Ashcroft came up with the list um, after the after, in, in the aftermath of 9-11, the list that he came up with wouldn't have had those two countries on it either. We have to look at the fact that a lot of the 9-11 attacks were planned both in the United States and in Germany. We have haven't been targeting America or Germany as places that were countries of special interest. Again, it's, it's one of these issues where you want to be realistic about the threat, but you also want to be very, very, very hard-nosed, I think, in asking questions about whether what we're doing is just to make us feel better, just to make us seem like we're doing something tough, or whether it's really going to work. It's wasting time and taking effort away from the real bad guys. Let's right. talk about, speaking of real bad guys, let's talk about Uganda. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have done all this exclusive reporting. You have another guest tonight, Bob Hunter, on the anti-homosexual bill of 2009. Uh, explain what the bill does and what efforts you've now uh, been able to make. And also the link to these evangelicals, American evangelicals speaking in Uganda who gave the country the pretext they didn't need to go up against homosexuals and even threaten them with capital punishment. That's right, Andrea. I mean, there are a lot of countries around the world who have uh, incredibly draconian anti-homosexuality laws. There are a number of countries in the world in which people are executed for being gay. Uganda is considering legislation that would in fact do that, that would establish the death penalty in some cases for people who are gay. It's so draconian that it says that uh, any Ugandan anywhere in the world, in any other country, who is th found to be gay, it would be an extraditable offense that Ugandan citizen could be sent back home to be prosecuted 
persecuted for homosexuality no matter where they were living in the world. Just an incredibly, outrageously draconian uh, anti-gay law. And again, it's not unique, and it would be sort of strange to expect American politicians to get engaged in this Ugandan debate over this law. Uh, why pick Uganda? Why not talk about Iran or any of the other countries that have something like this going on? But the fact is that Americans have, American evangelicals in particular, and some conservative uh, American political and religious leaders have a lot of ties to Uganda, and they have been really involved in this country in the past. Anti-gay activists who pledge that people, people can be cured of homosexuality, they're written up in the New York Times this week. Uh, religious leaders like Rick Warren, who's had very close ties to a particularly anti-gay pastor named Martin Sempa, uh, who is tied up with this legislation. And some American politicians, including Jim Inhofe, Sam Brownback, Congressman Joe Pitts, people who've been very involved in internal domestic leg legislation on sexual morality issues in Uganda. But on this one, until quite recently, frankly, until we started reporting on it, they had nothing exactly. to say about this law. And the family. The family is, of course, this Washington institution, which I had reported previously, is involved in organizing the you know, annual prayer breakfasts. Presidents of the United States are always participating in this. But the family is connected to the evangelicals who are, by turn, uh, involved in Uganda and preaching there. That's right. Just as the family organizes the National Prayer Breakfast here in Washington, D.C., they also organize the Ugandan National Prayer Breakfast. The president of Uganda, who is, whose government supports this legislation, is said to be a member of the family, as is the young legislator, previously unknown legislator, who proposed the bill, drafted the bill, and proposed the bill in the first place. The family has taken on Uganda as sort of its outpost in Africa. That's the way it's been described by uh, Jeff Charlotte, who's done so much of the pioneering reporting on this subject. And so so it sort of became a big question as to whether or not American evangelicals and American religious leaders and Americans associated with the secretive group, the family, were going to try to be influential in Uganda on everything except this legislation to kill gay people, which they were very intimately tied to. I've been talking about the family for months now on my show. On tonight's Rachel Maddow show, for the first time ever, I'm going to be interviewing a member of the family um, about this law and their now, their, their now efforts uh, to try to stop it. Rachel Maddow, thank you so very much, and we should all be watching, we will be watching tonight, the Rachel Maddow Show tonight, right here only on MSNBC at 9 Eastern.